we have seen that narayan is an expert businessman now narayan is also a money lender so through all his operations that is by lending money as well as through his business he can make his money grow as we saw in previous cases when narayan is either investing in the show business or giving out money to friends let's say in a span of 2 years where he had given out rupees 1 lakh he is able to earn back rupees 1 lakh 44000 so as we can see his money has grown by 44000 rupees now sudhir is also in possession of 1 lakh rupees but instead of any transactions he is simply keeping this money in a safe and after 2 years obviously this money is not growing it remains fixed at 1 lakh so what does sudhir need to do in order to make his money grow now the truth is that everyone is not a skilled businessman in this case as narayan is narayan can invest money in business as well as lend money to certain of his friends and get back more money in the process but Sudhir is not as skilled a businessman and he doesn't have friends who needs to borrow money from him so what do people like sudhir do this is where banks come into the picture sudhir and people like sudhir will have to deposit their money in banks now banks offer a certain rate of interest at which your money will be growing every year so let's say the bank is giving a certain amount of interest so at that particular rate of interest your money will grow year by year and if you invest in the bank you will find that at the end of each year your money will have grown a certain amount the interest that is offered by banks is not simple interest but compound interest or in other words interest is added upon interest and that is how your money grows in banks so now let us say that sudhir has deposited his 1 lakh rupees in the bank for a period of 3 years the bank is offering him a rate of 10% so 10% is the rate of interest now what is the amount of money that sudhir will get back after these 3 years let us help him calculate so we have the principal is 1 lakh rupees the time for which the money is deposited is 3 years and the rate at which it is deposited is 10% so the amount at the end of the first year will be given by p into 1 plus r by 100 as we had seen from our previous discussion so if i simply replace the value i will get 1 lakh multiplied by 1 plus r that is 10 in this case divided by 100 so if i simplify this equation further i will write it as 1 lakh into 110 divided by 100 now i can further simplify this in order to obtain the amount at the end of first year so i cancel out these two zeros and what am i left with i am left with 1000 into 110 so that will give me 110 and then three more zeros so rupees 1 lakh 10000 is the amount that is outstanding at the end of the first year so this is the amount of money that sudhir would have got back if he had invested his money for one year but such is not the case sudhir has invested his money for 3 years so this process will continue so what is the principal for the second year the principal for the second year will be nothing but the amount at the end of the first year that is equal to rupees 1 lakh 10000 so now we have to calculate the amount at the end of the second year with the help of this principal that we call p2 thus principal for the second year being p2 the amount at the end of the second year will be p2 whole 1 plus r by 
So P2 is 1 lakh 10,000. So I replace 1 lakh 10,000 as well as the rate of interest that remains fixed at 10%. So I get 10 by 100 over here. So I can further simplify this by the method I had used before. So I write 1 lakh 10,000 multiplied by 110 divided by 100. So what will this give me? So now how can I calculate this equation? If I simply cancel out these zeros, I will be left with 1100 multiplied by 110. So this will yield me a value of 1,21,000. So 1,21,000 is the amount at the end of second year. So this is the amount that Sudhir would have got back had he invested his money for only two years. But such is not the case. There is one more year remaining. So the principal for the third year will be equal to the amount for the second year. And that is equal to 1,21,000. So 1,21,000, that is P3, is the principal for the third year. So now let us see how we can calculate the amount at the end of the third year. Again, we carry out a similar operation by replacing the values. So we further simplify this equation by writing it as 1,21,000 multiplied by 110 divided by 100. So again, if I simply cancel these zeros, I am left with 1,210 multiplied by 110. And this gives me a value of 1,33,100 rupees. So this is the amount at the end of the third year. Now I am interested to find out the compound interest. That is the amount of money which his original invested money has grown. So the original invested money was rupees 1 lakh and I am interested to find out by how much it has grown. So that is equal to the compound interest which is nothing but the final amount that Sudhir is getting back which is 1,33,100 rupees minus the principal or the amount of money that Sudhir had originally invested. So that is equal to 33,100 rupees. So we found that instead of keeping his money in a safe, if Sudhir deposits that money or invests that money in a bank, we find that his money is growing by rupees 33,100. Now obviously calculation of every year's interest and every year's amount is quite tedious. What if the number of years instead of being 3 was a greater number of years, let's say 7 years, then would you have calculated the interest for every year individually? That is quite a tedious job. So now let us see how we can generalize the formula and come up with a given formula for compound interest and the amount that is generated. So over here we consider a general scenario where the principal is P, the time is T and the rate of interest is R. So by applying the formula for simple interest, we find that I1 or the interest for first year is equal to PR by 100. Now we are interested to find out the amount at the end of first year that is equal to A1. So how do we calculate the amount? The amount will be nothing but the principal plus the interest which is equal to P plus PR divided by 100. So that gives us P into 1 plus R by 100 because we take P common and we are left with 1 plus R by 100 within the brackets. 
So P into 1 plus R by 100 is A1. That is the amount at the end of first year. Now this amount at the end of first year will serve as the principal for the second year. So I can write that the principal for second year, which is P2, will be equal to the amount at the end of first year. That is A1. So now A1 is equal to P into 1 plus R by 100. P whole 1 plus R by 100. So this will be equal to P2. Now again in a similar manner, I will calculate the interest at the end of the second year. So how will I calculate the interest at the end of second year? That will be I2 equals P2 into R divided by 100 and I will get the amount as the amount at the end of second year would be P2 plus P2 into R divided by 100. So this would give me the amount. So if I take P2 common, I will get P2 1 plus R divided by 100 equals A2 or the amount at the end of the second year. So this gives me P2 1 plus R by 100. Now if we consider the previous equation, we found out that P2 is equal to P into 1 plus R by 100. So if I replace the value of P2 with P into 1 plus R by 100, I will find that the value of A2 is nothing but P into 1 plus R by 100 into 1 plus R by 100. So this gives me P into 1 plus R by 100 whole square because there are two occurrences of this term and they are multiplied with one another. So I get the amount at the end of second year A2 is equal to P into 1 plus R by 100 whole square. So this A2 will now serve as the principal for the third year. So now I can write that the principal for third year P3 will be equal to the amount at the end of second year which we had obtained as P into 1 plus R by 100 whole square. So with the help of this equation P3 equals this let us proceed to calculate what the amount at the end of third year would be, that is A3. So in this case, A3 would be P3, that is the principal for the third year, plus P3R by 100. So let's say I take P3 common, I am left with 1 plus R by 100. So the amount at the end of the third year would be P3 into 1 plus R by 100. Now I will replace the value of P3 with the value from this particular equation. And if I do so, what am I left with? I will be left with P into 1 plus R by 100 whole square into 1 plus R by 100. So now if you observe this equation carefully, you will find that I have 1 plus R by 100 whole square multiplied by 1 plus R by 100. And what does this give me? This gives me P into 1 plus R by 100 whole cube. So the amount at the end of the third year, that is A3, is equal to P into 1 plus R by 100 whole cube. So we can carry on with this process for as many years as required. And as we see at the end of first year, we obtained the amount as P into 1 plus R by 100. At the end of the second year, the amount was P into 1 plus R by 100 whole square. At the end of the third year, the amount is P into 1 plus R by 100 whole cube. And if we have more number of years, Let's say 
the fourth year a4 the amount will be p whole into 1 plus r by 100 to the power 4 in a similar manner if we continue and let's say we have n years so the amount at the end of n years will be nothing but p into 1 plus r by 100 to the power of n so this will give us the general formula for the amount at the end of n years thus we get a n is equal to p into 1 plus r by 100 to the power of n where n is the number of years for which the transaction is being considered so now let us find out what the compound interest will be we found out that the amount at the end of n or t years let's say is equal to p whole into 1 plus r by 100 to the power of t now if we are interested to find out the compound interest or ci that will be equal to the amount at the end of t years minus the original principal that is the principal that was invested or taken into consideration at the beginning of the first year so amount minus original principal will give us the compound interest ci let us replace the values now the amount after t years is p into 1 plus r by 100 to the power of t so i write it as this and the original principal is nothing but p so i write p now simplifying this equation i can take out p common because it is present in both the terms and what am i left with i will be left with 1 plus r by 100 to the power of t minus 1 so this is the formula for finding out the compound interest given p r and t so if you are given any of these three values out of four we can calculate the other value so now let us see whether this formula holds true and how we can use it easily in order to calculate the amount at the end of a given period of time so over here we have considered that Sudhir is investing rupees 1 lakh at the rate of 10 percent in a bank for a total period of four years now as you can see the amount of money involved is quite large and if you have to calculate the interest separately at the end of each year individually that is it would be quite tedious so let us use this formula so I replace the values p with 1 lakh 1 plus r by 10 and n with 4 so this is the formula for the amount at the end of four years that Sudhir will be receiving from the bank so if I simplify this equation I will be able to write 1 lakh into 110 by 100 to the power of 4 so if I further simplify this equation then this will yield me a value of rupees 1 lakh 46,410 so once he invests rupees 1 lakh in the bank at the rate of 10% for 4 years if I simply use this value I am able to come up with the amount that Sudhir will be receiving after 4 years so this is the value and as you see it can be calculated very simply instead of having to go through so many tedious calculations for every individual year so this is the formula for compound interest for finding out the amount at the end of a given number of years